And what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into um, the different ways of saving and displaying text. Okay. So let me go ahead and start my screen share again. Get a drink of water. Share my desktop. There we go. Okay, so here we are inside the CMS, uh, that project that we just finished, right, or was working on. Now, something I didn't um, talk about, okay, much, I, I think I, I breezed upon it maybe a little bit too, too quickly. Actually, let me go ahead and, and talk about that really quick. Okay. There are two aspects to the CMS. Okay. I, I, I should explain this for those people that are new. You have your admin side and your content side, right? Okay. Um, so on the admin side, this is where you're going to build an admin area for people to save their text. Okay. And then we have the content side, which takes this, the content that we saved and displays it. Right. Right. So obviously your admin side is going to be probably a protected area. Okay. Which we'll be going over today. There is a protect stack to help you password protect your admin area. Okay. And then we have the content side, which we, they can, can display that, that CMS data to our users on the website. Okay. So right now we're going to go ahead and let's talk about the various ways that we can save data. Okay. Since we're, we're continuing down the admin path right now a little bit, let's continue down that path. And we're, we're going to give a kind of in-depth review of all the ways that we can save text. Okay. To the CMS. Okay. So here we are. Uh, and let's look at this default uh, text box, okay, uh, which is the default way of saving text. Now, you'll notice that we gave the CMS ID, and I kind of, you know, explained what that CMS ID is. It is the unique ID for this particular CMS region, okay, or this CMS area, okay. Um, it, it needs to be unique for that particular type. So if you have text and the CMS ID of that text you know, needs to be unique. You can't have multiple instances with the same CMS ID. Okay. Even if they're on different admin pages. Okay. Which we'll get to in a little bit in terms of strategy of, you know, do I need one admin page or a whole set of admin pages? It really depends on how big and how many admin areas you need. Right. So this CMS ID needs to be unique for, it could be the only text CMS thing, right. For called workshop. Okay. We'll leave it at that. You can show or hide a save button. Okay. Uh, we'll go into the save button a little bit later. That's, you know, generalized save button stack that I showed earlier. Okay. But right now we're just going to have the save button here. You can have the text and insert your placeholder, which is what shows here by default, if nothing is saved. Okay. Now here's the, the meaty part. Okay. We have two different editors inside total CMS. We have a hip wig editor and a text slash markdown editor. Okay. Now, the Hipwig editor is the default editor inside Total CMS, and it's it's kind of it's it's a WYSIWYG editor. Okay, now let me stop and give you a little bit of background on what what is Hipwig, right? It's not a common term; it's something we termed, right? So, when I originally released Total CMS version one point zero, okay, it only supported plain text and Markdown. That was it. Okay. Now there were some users that um, were very passionate about having a WYSIWYG editor. And um, I was very against it because most WYSIWYG editors out there, even nowadays, okay, the code that those generate is horrible. Like, uh, you know, and I, I wanted to build a CMS that made nice websites, right? And um, traditionally, if you give a client a WYSIWYG and you just, you know, put it on there, right? A lot of times they give the customer the ability to make some really um, horrendously ugly things. Like we're talking like 
purple backgrounds with pink text and and whatnot, right? So that's why I was so so hardcore against having a WYSIWYG editor, okay? But people kept pressing me. In particular, a user that we all know as the hipster weaver, okay? Uh, Mr. John Hawkins was extremely passionate about nagging my ears um, on a multi-daily basis about having a WYSIWYG editor for his clients. And um, so finally, I just kept doing a little bit more research and research. And um, I found this commercial tool, um, this commercial WYSIWYG editor that um, was a little pricey, but um, it kind of, it did things a little bit nicer than what the traditional WYSIWYG editors out there actually did, right? And um, I had controls to, you know, give them which, you know, what abilities do they have, right? So by default, if we look at hip, you know, and I should say that the name, okay, Hipster Weaver, we can all thank him for giving us a WYSIWYG editor, but um, typing WYSIWYG all the time was like a pain in the butt, right? It's like W, Y, S, I, whatever it is, right? It's what you see is what you get. That's what WYSIWYG means, right? And I got sick of trying to type WYSIWYG. So I'm like, I got to come up with a different name. And Hipster Reaver forced me to do it. So we came up with HipWig. That is the origins of the Total CMS HipWig editor. I hope you enjoyed that. But anyway, okay, so back to the fun stuff. Um, let's go ahead and uh, jump back in. Share my screen. Okay, so HipWig editor. If we preview this page, okay, you'll see that we are in the HipWig editor and it has basic controls, okay? Um, these are what you get by default. You get a uh, bold, italic, underlined, and you can add a link. That's it, right? You can't, you can't color things. You can't change the background color of things. You can't make things 500 pixels tall. You can't do any of that, okay? It is very, a very controlled environment. Okay, you as the, as the designer of the website, design the style of things. And with this setup, you're only allowing the customer to control the content. Okay, and now obviously you're giving them some style aspects in terms of making some things bold or italic or underlined. Okay, but obviously we want the ability to give our customers enough rope to hang themselves, right? So, one stack I didn't really go into the uh, settings for much yet, okay, is admin core. Now, inside the admin core stack, you will notice that if you scroll down a little bit, there is an entire section on HipWig, and there are a lot of settings, okay? So, let's dive through some of, the, some of these right now. I'm not going to dive through every single one of them, right? Um, it's an, impor an important one, okay? On the enter key, when you actually hit enter inside HipWig, do you want to start a new paragraph or do you want to just add a line break? Okay. Um, most people, I think paragraph makes sense. Um, depending on what you want to do, you might want line breaks instead. Okay. Um, the, the toolbar, do you want it static or inline? Okay. You can play around with that. And then the language. We support English, German, and Spanish. Um, if you want another language, um, I would love if you wanted to help me translate something, I'd be more than willing to do another one, right? But uh, right now we have German, English, and Spanish, which are definitely the most popular um, kind of languages out there in terms of Rapid Weaver users, okay? Um, now, by default, any script or style tags that you put that the user types in will get removed, okay? So this way our users aren't going to go ahead and type in or copy some snippet they, they found on the internet and try to put it in there and it's going to break their site, right? This protects users from themselves, okay? Because it, it doesn't allow them to have in any script or style tag that they want, okay? It's going to remove it before, before it gets saved to the CMS, okay? Um, We'll, we'll ignore the gallery in image stuff for right now. This is for image upload, uploading images via HipWig, which you can do. Uh, we'll kind of cover that when we dive into images a little bit, okay? But 
these are the same um, features that we'll see in the images. So you can have, you know, what percent quality the JPEG, you know, what's the max size that will get, you know, done and the thumbnail. Okay, so you can easily, uh, you know, do that. Same thing, Depot ID, that's for uploading files via HipWig. Um, it does support uploading files into a depot, okay? So then, you know, you can have a download link inside of your text area. Um, it's very convenient. So now we have this huge grid of buttons, okay? And this controls what shows up in the HipWig toolbar, okay? So if I, let's just go ahead and turn some things on. So I'm gonna have image and video, and maybe I want them to add number and bullet lists, okay? And maybe we'll give them the ability to align text, okay? Now, some things that I think are more on the dangerous side to give people, okay? The style stuff, oh, the, the text size stuff, and the color options, okay? Those, I think, are a little bit dangerous. Um, let's, let's go ahead and turn those on. We'll kind of show you what they are. Okay. So here we have bold italic, right? So if I select this text, I can say bold, right? And I can select this one and say italic and so on and so forth, right? I can select amazing, uh, click here, and then I can type in HTTPS, oops, URL. Uh, well, apparently that doesn't work in here. Uh, it'll, it'll work in, in the web page. Um, insert image, okay, that allows you to drag and drop images, okay? Um, it'll also, if you have uh, images already uploaded to HipWig, you can click on this bad boy and it will display images that have already been uploaded into HipWig um, so that you can kind of share and use the same image across multiple HipWig images or instances. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, insert video. This allows you to put in, type in a URL. So you can put in a, a, Vimeo, or a Vimeo or YouTube URL here and it will be embedded in uh, directly into the HipWig uh, text area. You can also type in your own embed code here. Um, and uh, this video upload, it doesn't support video uploads right now. Um, I'm just not able to, to remove this option. Um, you cannot upload videos, but you, it does work if you have your own custom embed code or if you type in um, the various you know, um, social network video sites such as YouTube and Vimeo. You can just type in the URL here and it will insert that directly into HipWig. Paragraph formatting, okay, this I think is potentially dangerous um, to give customers, um, you know, because they, they, can, they can do not a ton of damage, right? But they can insert, they can make something a heading or a heading and you, you can edit, I'll show you how we can edit the options available here as well, okay? Um, alignment, so obviously align left, right, center. Uh, font sizes, this uh, I, I would, if you're gonna, not include something, you know, this one isn't horrible because we can still style headings the way that we think they should be styled, right? But then once you give customer the ability to change font sizes of things, it, um, it can get ugly very quickly. So um, I would strongly recommend that you just manage this, the style of the site yourself, determine the font sizes, and don't tell your customer that they can change the font size and don't turn this option on. But that's my preference. Um, you can obviously do uh, what your customers want. Colors, okay, here we have colors. You can change the text color and background colors to whatever you want. Um, uh, very, very dangerous thing because customers will do hideous things like making purple text with like a, a pink background or something. They will do it and, oh uh, man, ugh. Okay, ordered list, they can have uh, numbered lists and bullet lists and whatnot. So another thing that's interesting that I kind of skipped over if you look at this toolbar here, okay, it's kind of just one big, huge, long toolbar, right? But it would be nice if we could have some organization to it. You'll notice that there are some divider settings. So what you can do is you can actually have vertical dividers. So I'm going to go ahead and add, let's add a vertical divider uh, right here. We'll notice that it added a vertical divider right here. So it just gives it a little stylistic. Now, if you're curious what horizontal dividers do, is that will actually break the toolbar into two lines and it will, it will basically divide them horizontally, okay? So, you know, you have multiple things, uh, you know, options to do that. So you, you can have vertical here. There are some other things here. So if I go ahead and turn on like, um, you know, quotes and lines and HTML and tables, and uh, let's make the horizontal break there. 
right? So here I have this first set of buttons and then a, a vertical line break, our second set of buttons, then a horizontal break, and then this last set of buttons is inserted on that last line. Okay, now you, you could add a vertical line there and it'll put it all in one line with nice little dividers, okay? Now, if you would like even more control, okay, with Hipwig, there are these pro settings down here at the bottom. So these pro settings allow you to, if you click on them, if you click on it, this allows you to do custom, uh, a custom toolbar, okay? So here I have bold, italic. You'll notice that I have all of the default buttons here, but they're just text options, okay? Now this is, you have to be syntactically correct here because it is single quote and then a keyword, single quote, and then a, a comma, and then the next one, right? So if you break this, it will break your page if you have the wrong syntax, but it gives you full control over exactly what you would potentially want. Okay, now if you wanted a vertical divider, it is this pipe, okay, inside single quotes. If you wanted a horizontal divider, it is a dash. Okay, so this toolbar buttons pro option, okay, gives you a ultimate flexibility for creating this uh, toolbar, okay. The next is the uh, pro setting for the format menu, okay. So this allows you to do uh, you know, normal, you have H1s, H2s, H3s. Um, you can only put in um, basically HTML tags. So here it's H1 is the HTML tag that it's going to insert. And then you can give it a label of heading one or whatever else. If you, if you want to translate that, you can translate it into your language. Okay. Um, and then color options. These are advanced color options, so you can customize the exact colors that are inside the text colors and the background colors. So, um, you know, if you're going to give your client customer, you know, control over colors, um, you might want to limit it to just a few colors. Like you're allowed to do, you know, black or dark gray or something like that. Be like Batman. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the ins and outs of Hipwig. Um, I've kind of killed it with a dead bone, okay? Um, well, that didn't make sense. Kill it with a dead bone. That made zero sense. But you kind of get my drift. Um, let's look at what Hipwig saves to um, the CMS, okay? So let's look at Transmit again. If we look at, at what is saved, okay? If you remember, it saved... HTML. This is HTML and it is a paragraph tag that is set to today is going to be amazing. Now you don't see these paragraph tags, okay, um, inside Hipwig because it, Hipwig just gives you what you want, okay. Um, now if we were to click, does this have the HTML? No, I'm going to turn off the pro settings here really quick. Okay. So if we turn on the code view, okay, then we'll see exactly what Hipwig is going to output. Okay. Now you can edit this, right? If you wanted to get really, you know, fancy, you can type in your own HTML in here and save it. Okay. But remember, if you have the script tags stripped from Hipwig, those will get stripped. Okay. Um, but you can edit HTML live here inside Hipwig. Okay. But if you notice here, it does, um, you know, for the end user, just display the text. But it's important to note that it is not saved as plain text to the CMS. It is saved as HTML because that's what WYSIWYG editors do, okay? Now, the CMS also allows us to save things as plain text. Okay, so if I change this to a text slash markdown editor, okay, by default, it does accept markdown formatting. Okay, we could turn that off if we want. Okay, um, you can, let's preview this actually before we start looking at any of the other options. Okay, so this is now plain text. And if you notice, since this is the CMS idea of workshop, it's bringing in the contents of the CMS and it's displaying it as plain text. 
So here we see that Hipwig is saving the HTML and we're seeing that as plain text in the plain text editor. If I want to go ahead and change that, I can go ahead and if now if I were to save this, okay, and let's go back into the CMS. we'll see that it is now saved as plain text without any sort of HTML at all inside the CMS. Okay. Now I'm going, I know I, it's taken me a while to get to the climax here, but this is very important things. Okay. Because uh, once we want to start using this content, th this data that we're saving on the content side, okay, it's very important that you're saving the content in the proper way. Now, while I'm in the text area, let's go over a few things. Um, you can do markdown formatting, which means you can do something like this, okay? Like you can have a star star. Um, oh, and actually, um, if you are gonna use the markdown editor, okay? There is a cool tool uh, it's actually been a while since I've used it, to be honest, called Toolbar, okay? Now, because I originally, you know, only wanted plain text and markdown inside the CMS, I developed my own markdown toolbar, which is kind of cool, actually. Because what you can do is, um, if you click on this, um, you'll notice that a little menu shows up below, and you can say bold, and it types in the bold here, or you can select the text, and you can say, I want it italic, okay? Oops italic and it makes it inserts the markdown for you it's very cool okay um if you're using markdown and you like markdown this is a great option now if you're curious if i save this okay and we look at what it saved as in the cms okay we'll see that it's saved as the plain text markdown okay uh, again that's just important for you to know okay Um, I'm going to go ahead and, um, so this toolbar is cool. The toolbar has a bunch of options as well. So you can turn on and off buttons. Okay. Um, convenient. Uh, but to be honest, if you want something like that, I think Hipwig is probably going to be a little bit easier for your customers. Um, me two years ago would have slapped myself on the head for saying that, but, um, I do have to agree now the hip wig is very nice, which is why it's now the new default editor in, in total CMS. Okay. Um, now you can also make this a password field. Okay. Um, now when it's a password field, you have to set the form height to one. Okay. Um, because it just, it's going to show up as a, as a one line text field. Okay. And, um, if you notice here, when it's in a password field, it shows up like this as a password. So this is, it, you know, so the user doesn't necessarily see what's saved in the CMS. They could type in, this could be used for integrating with things like page safe or some other things where maybe you want to, you know, hide the data from the web page. Okay. Um, you can also strip HTML on save. What this does is it's similar to that strip stripping of tags and CSS um, inside Hipwig. Okay. So this would strip any sort of HTML that is, that is typed into this. Um, it'll strip it and only keep the raw text. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is I want to, I want to quickly look at some questions. Um, let's go ahead and answer a few questions before I jump into the content side of text. Um, oh, the question, what does the language setting inside admin core control? Okay, good question. So let's go ahead and, um, oh, I'm not sharing my screen. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and uh, go back to Hipwig editor. Okay, and... Uh, bah, bah, bah. Oh, that's weird. Interesting. Never done that before. Interesting. Okay. So Hipwig editor and uh, let's go ahead into the admin core. And you wanted to know what this language did. Okay. So if we uh, preview admin core here, uh, let's wait. Okay. Um, 
So right now it's English. And if you look, if you hover over all of these tooltips, it gives you a, a idea of what that particular tool does, right? So if we were to change this to a language, let's go ahead and change it to German. I know we have some German friends in the audience today. Um, let's edit preview again. It should. Oh, what the heck? Well, that may be a bug. I swear that used to work. Okay, well, I might have found a bug. It should have changed the tooltips here. <laughs> Let's try Spanish. Oh, oh, look at that. That's a that's a fail. Okay, it should change those tooltips. Interesting. I'm not sure when when exactly that broke. Um, another thing, if you notice at the bottom of Admin Core, um, while we're here. Okay, there are a ton of things that you can translate throughout the admin interfaces, okay? So little error messages that pop up from various admin stacks, okay? This is a, a centralized way to um, change the translation of all of them all in one spot, okay? So very cool. A um, Couple of things I, I didn't check for or I didn't show you is inside admin core, the very top thing is pretty much the only thing I didn't, I didn't show you yet is the ability to um, style various admin components, right? So if you're using foundation, set this to yes. If you're not, set it to no. There is an auto checker, but it is better to set it yes or no, okay? Um, if you're curious why we have this is because um, if you set this to no, okay, or if the auto checker determines that you're not using foundation, what it does is it loads a little bit extra CSS and JavaScript on the page, okay? Um, so it's just a little nicety. If you're using foundation, set that to yes, and you'll save a, you know, a kilobyte or two, uh, however big those files are. Not, not, they're not large, but it'll save you a little bit of JavaScript and, and JS on the page, okay? And it only affects the admin page. Um, it does use some foundation uh, stuff to, just to make things a little bit easier to develop. Okay. But, um, it's, it's really not a game changer. Like I said, foundation or total CMS will work on foundation. Um, and it will work on any other theme or at least it should. Okay. Um, and all these colors are various things. So like main colors, so like the background color of all the text boxes, the actual text inside the text boxes, um, the outline. So the border, right? So if I want to go ahead and make that, you know, slightly darker gray, I can do that. So it made the outline inside a little darker gray. Um, and then if we want to change the border, we can make it, I don't know, let's just make it black for right now. I think it's going to look horrible, but yeah, it looks pretty horrible, but whatever. Um, so, you know, then you can change the, the, but the default buttons and the text of the buttons and that the action bars um, that are inside images and whatnot um, and the color of the icons in, in image drop zones and uh, file drop zones and things of that nature. Then we also have a uh, sizing of text and borders. So um, these are just, and these are global settings for all admin stacks, all total CMS admin stacks on the page. Okay. Uh, that black border is bugging me. Let me change that back. All right, actually here, let me go back to the default settings because I think the default settings are really nice. And we have that as a workshop. Okay. So now let's jump onto the content side, okay? And talk about, um, well, actually before I jump onto the content side, um, I, I told you there are many different ways to save um, things to the CMS, okay? Or text, okay? So the, def the, the most common sense way is via this text box, okay? However, there are other ways to save text to the CMS. Okay, and there are a few other admin stacks here. The first is the select box. Okay, so what the select box does is, oh, I don't have any options. Um, need to have, you can have various options. So let's just do something simple. Um, label, we'll just say yes, no, or the value is yes. Okay, um, here the option is, uh, we'll say the label is no. The value that's saved to the CMS is 
um, no. Or actually, let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's make something yes. Um, I love total CMS. No, I am crazy. Okay, so um, here we have a select box. Um, we'll just leave the CMS idea select for right now and select your option. Um, here we'll just show a save button, okay? And basically what you can do now is um, the option here is, well, let's say I want a, let's just add a normal text stack to the page. Say, do you love total CMS? Okay. So here I have, do you love total CMS? And you're going to answer this yes or no. And then you're going to say save. Okay. Now, if we look at the CMS now, okay, what we'll notice is, oops, go to transmit, refresh. We'll notice that inside text, okay, there is no select type because select just saves as text. If we open this file, we'll see that it saved, yes, I love total CMS. Okay, now the reason this is contained in here is because if we look back at our options here, in the select box, I set the label of this option to yes, the value is yes, I love total CMS. That is, is what is saved to the CMS. So if I were to go and head and um, preview this page again and say no, and then save that, let's go ahead and look at, look at the CMS again. It's gonna say, no, I am crazy, right? So I, as you see, this is a, the select box is a great way to kind of have static um, content for your user to select, right? Now this value, it could be pretty complex stuff, right? It could be a, a full-blown HTML thing, right? If you want, right? But it's a way of your customer to kind of change things and to give you the ability to toggle things just by giving them a, a, a fixed option, list of options to choose from, okay? Very powerful. Um, select box is cool. Good stuff. Other ways to save text, okay, is um, there is a number, okay? Now, um, numbers are obviously just a number. You can define a minimum value, a maximum value, and a step value, okay? So if you wanted to step up by tens, okay, and it started at zero, max at 100, okay? Um, we can go ahead and, or let's show the save button again. So here I'm gonna have a value. Currently it's not set to anything, right? Because the CMS has nothing for this value. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change this to um, 10 and then we're gonna save it, okay? And just for thoroughness, if we check this in the, C in the CMS, it saves the number 10 as text in the CMS, okay? So if you needed to have a number saved and, and it's just a, a different control, right? You could just do a text box with a number, right? But this sort of control is a little bit nicer for customers because it allows them to have these little arrows and up and down. Just makes it a little bit more convenient for our customers to input data and, and limit their control of what they can input. Because if you really wanted a number, you don't want them to type in a sentence, right? Um, so that's good. Um, and other ways, I think, I think those are the most, those are going to be the most popular ways of saving text. Okay. There is a date which uh, could be used as a text, but it's not, not really. We'll, we'll review text later on today or date. I'm sorry. We'll review date later on today. Okay. But, um, now while I've had, while I'm here, okay. If you notice, I have three text areas, all three have a save button, um, kind of looks horrible. Okay, um, I'm a fan of just having a single save button on my page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn all of those off. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a save button at the very top. Okay, um, now if you notice the save button stack here is just a drop down. There is no button in it. 
Okay. And the reason that is because whatever button you throw into here, it's going to turn it magically into a save button. So you can use your favorite button stack, whether or not it's the default stacks button, whether or not it's the foundation button or a foundry button or button plus or whatever, right? Um, you can go ahead and throw that in there. Uh, and let's go ahead and just um, set this to save. And we're going to align it right. Okay, and we preview. Okay, so if you see here, now if I go ahead in here and I just, uh, amazing, let's just change this text a little bit. Oops, caps lock. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save that. If you notice, it's saved it finds whatever has changed on the page and saves those areas. So if I go ahead and change this and change this, you'll notice that both of those are now red. And if I click save, it's going to save both of those. Okay. So that's kind of a convenient thing with the, with the centralized save button. Um, and with the centralized save button, you could just use command S and it will save everything on the page as well. Okay. Um, so that, that's convenience if you're into keyboard shortcuts like I am. So if we look at the CMS now, um, we'll notice that I, I resave this as, um, you know, this is today is going to be amazing. Okay. Now on the content side, let's display this. Okay. So now we're on the content side. I'm on my content page. Now I have CMS core. Okay. Oh, I need my license information. Let's go ahead and go into admin core and copy that bad boy and go into here and save it, okay? Um, there aren't many settings inside CMS Core. Um, CMS Core is very convenient. It gives you a nice little um, thing about macros, which we'll review in a little bit, okay? But on, on this side, um, there are some stacks that have forms on the content side, primarily data stores, which we will show in a little bit. And, and the styles here allow you to um, automatically style those, okay? Um, based on centrally styling them inside CMS core. Um, but most people aren't, you don't, you're not going to use data store on, on many pages. So, um, you probably just leave these all the, the way they are. Um, you can turn off processing of macros if you really want. Okay. Um, and there is also a really, really fancy feature called macro prefix. Okay. Which, um, Remind me to tell you guys about that when we start doing macros. Um, it, I silently added it to a um, release a few months ago, and I didn't, I didn't even tell anyone when it was there um, because um, it is a very powerful feature um, that allows you to do some crazy things. Um, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll show it. You'll see how cool it is. Um, so Content side, let me go ahead and just do some styling options here. Um, the CMS core stack, I normally just, just kind of minimize that, kind of like with site styles, just minimize that. CMS core, you can have it pretty much anywhere on the page. You could be up, up there with site styles. Sometimes I put it at the very bottom of my page just so it's out of the way and I don't need to see it. Um, but it could be anywhere on the page, okay? But CMS core definitely needs to be on the page, uh, on the content side. Now on the admin side, CMS core doesn't need to be on the admin side, but some people like displaying CMS data on the admin side, if that makes any sense, right? Um, so if you want to change the header of the admin page via a CMS, then if basically if you need to access anything from the CMS in terms of displaying it on the, with content stacks, you need to have the CMS core on the page, okay? So let me just go ahead and add this. And what we're going to do first is I'm going to use a... Um, we will use the CMS text stack. Okay. So here we have the TMX, the total CMS text stack. Okay. It is on the content stacks and it just says text. Okay. Now what this does is you put in your CMS ID, our CMS ID that we're going to be displaying was, um, it was workshop, right? Workshop. And what we'll notice here is I have plain text plus hip wig, which is the default. Okay, so if you want to display something as plain text or um, the contents from Hipwig, you want that as your option. Okay, 
Now, if you want, if you know that the CMS area that you are saving to is Markdown, so you know you're saving Markdown, okay? Then you will, you, you will put in format plus Markdown. What that will do is that will process the Markdown in and into HTML, okay, on the fly. And then the next thing is alt image text. We'll, we'll look at that. That's the way the ability to actually grab uh, the alt tag from an image that's stored in the CMS and then display that as text on the page. Okay, cool stuff. For right now, uh, we want plain text hip wig because that's what we're using. Okay, and let's go ahead and preview our page. So there we go. We have a simple paragraph. Okay, actually, let's go ahead and preview this in the browser. Okay. And what we'll notice is I'm going to right click and I'm going to inspect this just so that you guys can see what it is. Okay. We'll see that if we look here in the inspector, okay, it is a paragraph tag. It is P today is going to be amazing. Close paragraph tag. Okay. It is a paragraph. It is inserting that into the page. Okay. Now if I go ahead and um, let's go to the admin page. And we'll preview that. Okay, let's just go ahead and make uh, that bold and we're gonna save it. Okay, let's go back to our content page and refresh. We'll notice now that today is going to be amazing is in bold. Okay, and if we look at the code here, it's today is going to be and then strong, amazing, close strong, right? And if just for verification, that's exactly what um, total CMS saved to the CMS. Today is going to be strong. Strong is a way of, of you know, just telling that that particular text is going to be bold, amazing, close strong, P tags, right? Okay, pretty simple. That's great, Joe. Awesome. Now. What, what if I wanted to use this text in a header, right? That, that could be possible, right? And then I assume, right, that all, all I need to do is, um, is to insert this as a header. How do I do that, right? Um, actually, be, before we leave here, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and quickly set up a markdown uh, box just so that we can, we can be thorough and show you that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just quickly set this up. I'm going to set the CMS ID to markdown. I'm going to, the editor is going to be a text markdown. I want markdown formatting and uh, go. Okay, preview this page. And here is my, uh, I'm going to preview it in the browser. Browser works a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So um, I'm going to do, um, this is, here, let's do this. Uh, one, two, three, mark down H3 is a paragraph. If I could type. Okay, we're going to save that. Okay, so now I have, um, some markdown saved to the CMS, okay? And let's go ahead and um, insert that onto the page. So on the content, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, do a new, here, actually, let's do this. So they're separated a little bit. Three, three. And we want that to be marked down. Okay, so here I have my text that we had before with workshop, and this one is going to be a CMS text markdown. Now this one isn't plain text. Let's go ahead and display it as plain text just for fun so we can see what it is, what it does. So if you noticed, I had it set to plain text and it just spit out the plain text that was saved to the CMS, right? I misspelled paragraph, please forgive me. Okay. If we go back to, to RapidWeaver and we go ahead and set that to format markdown and then we preview the page. Hello, refresh.
Oops. What the heck? Oh, it didn't save. Oh, man. That's crazy. Okay. Well, let's... Um, apparently, that's another bug. Let me... I'm going to jot that down. That's crazy. How did that bug have it come in and no one found that one out? I think it's because most of the time, if you notice the, um, the tech stack, what it does is it, basically what it does is it inserts a macro for us. So this tech stack kind of, if you notice here, it says CMS text workshop. This is CMS text markdown, okay? Um, this should actually say CMS text um, format. So if you look at these, these um, macros here, we have CMS text format and then our CMS ID. So what I'm going to do here is instead of this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a text stack. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a HTML stack and I'm going to put in um, CMS text format markdown. Okay. Now, this should drum roll, please. There we go. Okay. Whew. Um, so apparently there is a bug in that tech stack. Um, I will fix that. Um, uh, but basically we, we can still get that same result, uh, using macros, which we're going to review very soon in, in, that was my next thing. Okay. So force me to jump into the macros a little bit. So with this macro is it allows us to insert, um, text from the CMS wherever we want. Okay. Um, so let's say for instance, I now want to add in a, a header to my page. Okay. Um, I'm going to actually remove this example right now. Okay. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to use this workshop text. Okay. Um, and let's just add in a standard um, stacks header. Now, we know that we can use macros. Now, if we want to look at the macros again, let's just concentrate on these text-based macros, okay? Really, right now, we're going to focus on the first two macros. There is CMS text and then the CMS ID, CMS text format, CMS ID. The format basically means markdown, okay? You want it to parse and format markdown into HTML, okay? So we already used that, right? We used that um, inside, I guess I could have left that on the page, huh? That's fine. We'll leave that on the page and we'll just leave it down there. Okay. So now, now I have a header stack. I can get, I want the user to be able to edit this header, okay? So what I can do is I can insert this macro into the header stack. Shop. Oops. Okay. So here I've added in um, the CMS macro, okay, where it says CMS text. So we want to get the text and we want to get the text from the CMS ID of workshop and we want to insert it into this header. So what I would expect is that we have today is going to be amazing and it should be a header, right? Right? Okay, this is going to break. It's not going to do what you expect, or at least most of you, it's not going to do what most of you expect. That's not a header. What the heck? That's not my header style. This is what headers look like. This looks nothing like a header. Why did it do that? Well, the reason it didn't do that is because if we look at this code, We have, an, we have an H3, look, it had, it's in an H3, but inside there, it has the, that HTML from Hipwig. So in this particular instance, we do not want to use Hipwig when inserting text into a particular element, okay? Because what we want, we want it to be we expected it to look like this, 
or at least I would expect most of you to expect this, right? I would expect the code to look something like this. H3, this is my header, close H3, right? That's what it should look like. That's what the code should look like, but it didn't, right? Remember, because what the CMS is doing in this instance, the header stack has some H3 tags and then the CMS, because we're just using the CMS text macro, is taking the exact contents from the CMS, which in this case is workshop, okay? It's taking this and inserting that into the header stack, but that's not what we want. So how do we fix that, okay? Now, if you remember uh, a few minutes ago when we were talking about how to save content to a CMS using plain text versus Hipwig, okay? This is the exact example where we want to save content as plain text. Okay, so let's go ahead inside, uh, and that was this workshop, um, this workshop ID, okay? Instead of Hipwig for this, we wanna use a text and markdown editor. Now, if we don't want markdown, we could turn that off because we just want plain text, okay? In this particular instance, I don't necessarily need like a three line for a header. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it one line. So it's a nice, simple one line area. And let's preview that. Okay. Now it's displaying content that we already saved to the CMS, right? Um, but I, I want this to be simply, um, okay. And then I'm gonna save that. So I've now saved this as plain text to the CMS, okay? Let's go ahead and, and verify that in workshop, right? Plain text, there's no markdown or markup, okay? Go back to Rapid Weaver, okay? Go to our content page. And if we preview this now, we should see now, today is going to be amazing. You see that? And it is an H3 tag because if we look at the code H3, today is going to be amazing. Close H3. This is exactly what we wanted, right? This header is now styled how I as the designer style, right? Using my theme or site styles or font pro, whatever way you like styling text on your page, okay? It's styled the way I want yet the customer contain, can control just the content, okay? That's a very powerful, I know it took us a couple hours to get to this point, right? But it's a very powerful concept, okay? You as the designer need to design the site and you need to give control of just the content to your customers. And again, in Hipwig, it allows you to give a little bit more flexibility if you deem that customer smart enough. Okay, or they pay you enough money for them to have that control. It's up to you, but um, right. Hopefully, this is making sense to people. Okay, um, now when would you use um, Hipwig in in the Hipwig editor, and uh, when do you use Markdown? Okay, I think use the Hipwig editor whenever you have large blocks of text on the page, like a paragraph or, you know, something like that, where your customer gets a little bit more control, okay? For things such as headers, for things such as titles of tabs, right? Because once, once we've learned this macro syntax, we can now use this everywhere, okay? Now I'm gonna do something really quick. Let's go ahead and um, um, I'm gonna change things up a little bit, okay? Really, oops. <clears throat> I'm gonna do this really quick. So sorry if you're gonna, uh, I know we're, we're kind of at our break time already, but I wanna get this through to you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and do a new admin area, okay? I'm gonna have, I'm gonna ultimately, I'm gonna create a tabbed container, okay? And um, I want the customer to be able to control the titles of all those tags, those tabs. Okay, and um, we're gonna have things like header and paragraph. Okay, so I'm gonna do that really quick here. Um, 
So bear with me. Here I'm going to have, um, in here, we're gonna call this tab one. And uh, it's going to have, it's not gonna be Hipwig, it's gonna be plain text editor. I don't want markdown and I want one line, okay? Um, then we're gonna have here, or that's gonna be tab two. We're gonna save, do this. We're gonna be tab three, save that, and tab four, okay? Now, if you wanted, what we could do is we can go here. I can set up, uh, I can get my titles, right? Uh, here, we can do this uh, tab one. Two, three, four. Okay. Now we had four tabs, right? Um, now we also had. Uh, I said I wanted we have a header on the page and a paragraph. Okay, just for simplicity's sake. I'm going to go ahead and let's do here. Um, up here, we're going to have the header. Oh, I need a one column stack, or else it's going to like go huge. Actually, I want that in there too. Okay, um, and uh, so we're not making some things completely hideous. Let's add three, three rem, and let's do that again. And uh, I'll add uh, uh, three rem at the bottom. Okay. Oops. So here we have our text. Uh, this is going to be header. Okay, and. Uh, we don't want Hipwig because we this is going to be our header. It's going to be plain text, and uh, it's going to be just a one-liner as well. Okay, and then our last is going to be a paragraph. So here we have paragraph. Uh, this I'm going to set to uh, paragraph. Okay, insert text. This I want my Hipwig editor. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and preview this. So here I have, I'm going to type in, I'm going to, I don't have any of this data, right? I created all these new CMS IDs. None of them exist on the server yet. I'm just previewing locally in Safari. Um, so I'm just going to type in my um, workshop header. Um, ah. Okay, I'm going to type in some text and uh, I'm going to make that bold. You know, just add some formatting here. Maybe I want that underlined. Okay. Uh, maybe I want to link this to um, to my website. Uh, insert. All right. So now I have a link there. Um, and then here I'm going to have um, one, two, three, four. I'm going to save all this. Boom. Hey, so I've saved all of that content to my CMS. And I did that really quick, okay? But you see, I, I just created a header, created a paragraph with Hibwig, uh, and then I had um, plain text for four tab titles, okay? So how are we gonna insert that all on our content page now? Here, let's, uh, let's rethink our content page here. Once you get using the CMS, chances are you're not really gonna use the CMS text stack very much. You're gonna use macros, which is probably why no one caught that markdown bug before in the text stack. Um, so what we're gonna do is now we're just gonna use straight up macros everywhere, okay? Um, except maybe, maybe that, that paragraph of text, that's probably gonna be a good thing, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna add in a title, page title. Where is title? Title. Okay. And in here, I'm going to insert my CMS text. Um, header was my CMS ID. Okay. Boom. And then I'm going to add in a tab container because remember we had tabs. Oh, I need a column. Okay. Uh, there were four tabs, right? Um, here we had um, CMS text tab one, and I'm just gonna copy that. We'll go to tab two. We're gonna go to tab 
three. And then we're going to go to uh, tab four. And just for simplicity's sake, what I'm going to do now is um, for that paragraph text, um, I'm going to go ahead and add that text here. Um, and that was set to paragraph. Okay. Um, I could just insert it in HTML stack. Um, now here's something, some of you might've done this. Okay. You might have gotten the, cause you're like, oh yeah, I need to insert a paragraph, right? So what I can do is I'm going to set up, I'm going to set up foundation paragraph and then I'm going to put in my macro in here. Nope. Not going to work. Okay. Um, unfortunately that won't work. Um, because this text, as we said, it, it already Hipwig creates the paragraphs for us, right? So it's best if you either use the CMS text stack or what you do is you can use uh, an HTML stack and then you can put in the CMS macro in here. Okay, if you want to type out the macro, that's what you can do. Um, if you were to put in this paragraph into a foundation paragraph stack, it, it won't work how you would expect it to work. Okay, um, so just fair warning on that. Um, I, I'm not gonna create contents for tabs two through four. I think we're okay. Let's go ahead and preview this. Now, if I am a rock star, um, it will all work. And there we go. I have my header, okay? I have tabs one, two, three, four. And then here's my paragraph that was formatted with Hipwig. It has our bold, it has our underlined, and it has our link to my website. Really cool, okay? Now, you can use these macros anywhere inside the HTML, okay? So, what does that mean, Joe? Okay, that means that you can use things such as in the browser title. You can use things inside like this CSS tab or JavaScript tab or the head or the body okay, or inside meta tags, okay, if you're using foundation, okay, and you want users to be able to control their SEO tags, you can use uh, SEO helper, wherever the heck's that, there it is, okay, you can use SEO helper on the page, and you can, you can put in these macros, okay, into these settings here. Now, the macros will work in a lot of settings without, within various stacks, but I cannot guarantee that it will work, okay? Um, because some of these settings that are inside stacks, I mean, this particular one, all the settings that, the, that this stack outputs end up inside the HTML, okay? Now, if we look at the, at the anatomy of a web page, right? This particular web page, um, has a lot of different resources. There are CSS files, there are JavaScript files, so on and so forth. So, if you have a stack and you insert the macro into the settings of that stack and it does not work, okay, it doesn't work as you would expect it to, okay, chances are that stack could be inserting the value from that setting into the JavaScript file or maybe into the CSS file. If that is the case, the macro will not work. It only works in the instance that that macro is inside the HTML file. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys, right? So um, if we wanted to look really quick, actually, um, here's something interesting. So I've been doing tons of work on this project file, right? If we were to look at the live web page here, if we go to sandbox.joeworkin.net, Look, it, the thing is still blank, right? There's nothing to it, right? It's empty, okay? But if I republish, it, it will show up. But the power here is to show you that I've done a ton of stuff here with the CMS and adding data to the CMS, and it did not affect the live website yet, right? So that's powerful that you can kind of build content in the CMS, add data to the CMS, all without publishing. All, you know, granted, like I said before, you need to make sure that, the, that it is ultimately published to the server first with at least the CMS core on the page. 
so that the, the CMS application gets published, okay? But if we can go ahead and publish this now, it should publish it all up. Do, 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 Almost there, almost there, almost there. I right, done. Here, let's share again. Okay, so here we go. Um, ba -ba -ba. So here we go. Here is our site, right? We have uh, the header, all the tabs, and the text, right? And then we go to slash admin. And uh, here is our admin interface that we built. Okay. Um, I guess one thing uh, while, I, while I'm doing this, I said we want to password protect our admin site. This really, really wasn't part of the text, but while we're here and we're building this site, let's protect our website, right? Um, oh, I obviously don't want, I don't want to see a helper on there. Thank you very much. Okay. So the admin side, um, what we'd have is we have a stack called protect inside total CMS. And it is right here. It's called protect. And you can go ahead and add that to the page. Protect is really cool. Um, you can go ahead and add a, an icon if you want. I'm just going to leave it blank. Um, you can change some, you know, a few settings for the colors and changing some of the text and whatnot. Um, and you can enter in your password here um, and the expire time. So if you want to expire after how many minutes, okay? Um, so the, the password here, I'm just going to leave it as the default of password with an at sign and a zero. Um, and I'm just going to publish this. And it's a lot faster. Okay, if we go, boop. And now I'm on the admin page. If I refresh, it's not going it, to, obviously, it's going to prompt me to log in. So now I got to log in. And it lets me in. So that's how we can password protect our admin pages. Um, there are more elaborate uh, login solutions. Um, I have a stack called PageSafe, which is kind of like a professional version of that protect stack. Um, and if you need even something bigger than that, there's a you can integrate with SiteLock. SiteLock is an amazing tool that gives full-blown username password stuff, not just passwords. Um, so um, SiteLock is a, um, a full-blown you know, session onto its own. Um, you could probably do a full day on that at least. Um, and I have some site lock stacks that help you integrate it, but it is a third party tool to rapid weaver. Um, I have some stacks that help make it a little bit easier to integrate with rapid weaver, but, um, yeah, so that's how we can password protect our admin sites. Um, let's go ahead and look at some questions before we head off and grab a bite to eat and chit chat in the hangout. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what we got here. Um, Oh, don't forget. Oh, thank you for, he, he told me though, don't forget about the macro prefix in the content core. Thank you very much. Okay. I will go over that in a second. And Rob asks, asks a very intelligent question here about what kind of text can be used as a CMS ID. I think Rob already knows this answer, but he wanted me to answer it for all of you guys because it is very important. Um, the CMS IDs need to be simple. I recommend text numbers, absolutely zero spaces. Um, you can use underscores if you really want to. Um, I would highly recommend you stick with text and numbers only. That's it, text and numbers. So um, in terms of letters and numbers, I should say. Letters and numbers, that's it. Um, you can use underscores, that is allowed. Um, absolutely no spaces, that will not work, okay? Um, and no dashes are iffy. I wouldn't use dashes. I would stay away from dashes. Um, I think I might've fixed that, but stay away from dashes. 
like I said, make things simple, right? If you need a header, call it header, right? Or home header or something like that, right? Um, so maybe you come up with a, a little naming standard for CMS IDs where, you know, it's maybe the page name underscore something, right? Now, CMS IDs don't need to be specific to a page either, right? Because they can be used all across the site. I know some people have had that issue where they, they had this mindset where they thought you manage a piece of content and it's specifically for one thing on a page. Not necessarily. What if you have um, a common site title, right? Across all of, your, all of your pages. You have one site title attribute in the admin pages and you use the macro, that same macro to import that data on every web page, right? Or if you have a common footer on every single page and you want to have the same, you know, URL links or, you know, text about us text in the footer or things of that nature, right? That is all centralized. You, you create one thing in the admin area and you can use that macro on every single web page or as many as you want. It doesn't need to be every web page, right? So don't think that you need that, that one CMS area is tied to one content side. It is all global. That, that, that is images, text, everything, right? So if, you're, if you have the uh, customer logo at the top of every single web page and you want them to be able to change that, do it with the CMS. You upload it once and it, the same image is used on every web page, which is great because then we, we get to leverage browser caching and all that jazz, right? So um, the same exact image is used. So that's really, really cool stuff. And thank you very much for uh, Dominic for reminding me about that core prefix. Um, that's some cool stuff. So what this core prefix is, the user use case for this. Um, there are some users that have, let's say they, they've created some templated, templated pages in RapidWeaver for their site. Hold on, I need to wet my whistle here. Okay. So a user has some templated pages, meaning he has, let's say, a, a page about um, a course that he has, okay? And he duplicates that page whenever he needs to. And essentially, all he needed to do, the page is the same. All he wanted to do is change the CMS IDs for everything. So I had enough users, you know, come to me and be like, that'd be awesome if we could just like, have a centralized way of just like prefixing every single CMS ID with something, right? So let's say on uh, my homepage, I have header, text, and footer. And then I duplicate that page. It's the same exact page, but I want to use a different set of header, paragraph, and footer, right? This is where the, this pref this CMS ID prefix comes in, okay? So let's show you an example. Now, I might not do a full-blown example because it would take me a little while to set up, but I, hopefully you'll get the idea, okay? Okay, so here on the content side, okay, um, I have CMS core and we have header and all these tabs and a paragraph, okay? Um, and then I have, if we click on this little plus button, the macro prefix is blank. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate this page. Um, and it's just content copy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say macro prefix copy. Okay. So what this is doing um, is it's going to now be looking for copy header, copy tab one, copy tab two, copy tab three, copy tab four, okay? So let's go ahead in this on, the, on our admin page, okay? And um, it shouldn't take too long to duplicate. Right, let's go ahead and just copy that. And we'll put it down there. So we have copy header copy paragraph, and just to be thorough, let's go ahead and we'll have um, 
copy tab one, copy tab two. So this isn't saving, really saving us time on the admin side because we need to be able to edit all these various regions um, separately, okay? Um, so just go here. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put copy in everything just because it's just easier. Okay, and I'm gonna save all that. Okay, so now I have copy is everything, right? So on this content page, this content copy, I did it, right? There we go. So um, what it's done is, here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the macro prefix. And what it's done is it's brought in all the, the, the default stuff, right? So again, it's bringing in header, tab one, tab two, tab three, tab four, paragraph, okay? But in CMS core, now that I can, I can add in a prefix, so I wanna prefix all macros on this page with the word copy, because that's what I set up on my admin side, okay? This allows us to now bring in my page, I did zero work on this page, right? All I did is duplicate it. The only thing I changed was this setting in, in CMS core. You can imagine if you had a lot of data on this page, that this macro prefix could save you a ton of time. Okay, so, um, so yeah, let me, let me go back, see if we have any more questions about that. Can, oh, here Dominic asks, can clients create or change password in the protect stack? They cannot in the protect stack. They can with the page safe stack though. Um, so the page safe stack actually allows you to create as the designer, a master password, and then a, um, a configurable client editable password um, that they can edit. So the reason that's important is that um, it allows you to still have a master password, even though you don't might not know the password that they created. Okay. So, and that's one reason why the text box, the text admin area has that password option so that, you know, that's hidden from the, from the page, right? So the user can type in their new password and click save. Um, yes, and as Richard Hilsden uh, said, uh, he, he was asking, uh, we can use the save buttons as well as, you know, if you notice, I didn't click the save button every time, Command S or Control S on Windows will save um, all of the edited regions on a admin page. So that's a good, uh, a good tip right there if you're a keyboard guy like me. What would you use the select box for on the admin page for? Um, there are a few things you could use it for. Again, if you add, um, you know, let's say a predetermined set of headers for a client that you wanted them to, um, you know, toggle between 10 different options, you know, maybe you just want to make it simple. Maybe they have something that's like the day of the week and you want to, you know, add something that's just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So they don't need to type anything and they can just select it. Right. Or, um, maybe they have, um, a, here's an idea, a promotional area. Okay. Here's an exit here. Let me share this. Okay. Um, so let's say, um, on this page, I'm going to take this paragraph or wait, no, what was that select box here? Let's just do, let's create a new CMS area with a select box here just for fun. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and collect a uh, select box. Um, and uh, you have, um, let's call this specials or holidays, something like that, right? Um, and uh, the default option is uh, none. It saves a blank value, okay? Let's add a new one. Let's say um, Christmas is, uh, Merry Christmas. Okay. Um, this, uh, you, what you can do is, you know, obviously this, I'm just trying to do something that's quick, right? Um, Easter, <clears throat> find the egg or something like that, right? I don't know, right? Um, think of this as like a way, like instead of, you know, having short little sentences like Merry Christmas, maybe this was like a full-blown like 
copy of a sale or something like that, right? Their Christmas sale or something like that, right? So what you could do is, um, you know, it's just a way of toggling between those. So I'm, I made this what called uh, Osimus Holidays. Let's do a little H so that's all lowercase, right? And then um, over here, that's just, uh, I'm gonna be lazy, I'll just add it here. Um, and then I'm gonna say Holidays, plain text hip wig. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, let's preview that. Okay, so right now, um, if you notice here, it doesn't it doesn't show anything. Okay, um, that's because on our admin page, it's not nothing is saved, right? Or it's set to none, right? So I can go ahead and say uh, Christmas. Let's go ahead and save that. If I go back to my content page, uh, it now says Merry Christmas. Oh, I didn't put it inside of a column stack. That's why it's far, far left like that. Okay. Now, now if Christmas is over and they want to display nothing in that area. Okay. This is actually, actually a really good thing to, to show you guys. Okay. Uh, I'm going to set that back to none, save it. Okay. Um, with text. Okay. Um, at least if you're using just the CMS text box and nothing is there, um, nothing is displayed. So in that right now, I set that in the admin area to none. It saved nothing to the CMS. It saved just blank, right? So when it goes to display nothing, it's going to display blank, right? Um, that's a good feature of the CMS tech stack. And that's just if you insert just the text. Obviously, if I were to insert, you know, that as the header, there'd still be an H3 tag on the page and, and whatnot. But um, hope that gives you an idea of what you could use select stack for. There's also... A, um, a stack called select show, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, I guess, why, why, don't, why don't I show you now? Um, so in select show, you can say if holidays, okay, in the settings, so it's select show, um, if holidays is equal to, okay, and the condition is, um, I think I said it's a Merry Christmas, right? Uh, obviously, you'd probably type in something different, right? But it's a way uh, of you, um, you know, if it's set to Christmas, then show this air, this thing, right? So you can use it to to show and hide stuff on the page as well, right? Now, it's just a little bit more advanced. There's also the toggle stack, which we'll get to a little bit uh, later today. But um, that's another option for sl the select box. And we'll get into a, a more general use case for the select show stack later on. Okay. I think that covers all the questions, guys. Uh, we went uh, about 30 minutes long. So what we're going to do now is um, 